Good morning. Welcome. This is the 25th of April in the year 2021 to North Bethesda United Methodist Church. We gather together today to worship and celebrate the presence of God and to recognize that as we look at the 23rd Psalm throughout our worship celebration today, we'll discover just how much God's love for us is made real in the ways that God helps us in the journeys of life. We're really delighted that you're with us and pray that you'll sense God's spirit as we worship. This is already the fourth Sunday of Easter. We continue to remember that Eastertide reminds us that in God's hands, all things are possible as the resurrection of Jesus Christ symbolizes for us the beginning of the ways in which God can change and renew and restore us in incredible ways. We thank you for gathering together today and pray that you will sense the fellowship that we share with each other and especially urge you to continue to stay with us through the end. And we will go into breakout rooms as a chance to spend some time talking to each other as we have done already this morning. I love to see the variety of places where people listen from. So we're glad that you have the chat feature at the bottom to be able to kind of uh, let us know where you are as you listen and watch our Zerch, as we call it, Zoom Church. Uh, it's a great way for us to celebrate the incredible connections that we have. And often we have people from other parts of the world tuning in to join us on this occasion. The Lord is my shepherd. And because of that, we can learn to respond to that love from God by loving the Lord ourselves with our whole heart. This morning, the invocation is, my shepherd will supply my need. It's a beautiful rendition of a very famous song by Eclipse Six, an acapella group. Enjoy. <laughs> Dream. 
grateful to Gordon Gregg for serving as our liturgist today and invite you to follow his direction. Thank you, Gordon. Well, thank you, Jeff, and welcome to all our friends here. Could you please join me in the responsive call to worship? The responses are in, in um, bold. Do you need a guide? The Lord is our is shepherd. shepherd. Do you need a doorway to new life? The Lord is our gate. Do you need a rest? The, the Lord, Lord restores our souls. Do you need care? The Lord is our shepherd. Come, let us worship. Our, our song of praise this morning is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, the United Methodist Hymnal number 381. Our scripture this morning is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks be to God for this message of comfort and reassurance. Here we are at our brown bag story time, a chance for us to listen to the scripture lesson and to learn the things that might help us. And so I found today a video that introduces for children what Psalm 23 is really all about. I hope you enjoy this. Psalm 23. Bible chapters for kids. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my loving shepherd, he gives me what I need. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He blesses me with a place to rest. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He gives me peace. 
He restoreth my soul. He gives strength to my spirit. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He helps me do what is right, so that others will see how good the Lord is. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, so even when things look dark and scary, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will not be afraid, because God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He protects me and brings me comfort. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He blesses me even in front of those who don't like me. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. God welcomes me with his love. I overflow with his blessings. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. His goodness and love will always be there for me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I will live with Him forever here and in heaven. Okay, an opportunity to realize that the Lord is my shepherd is for everybody. No matter how young we are, no matter how old we are, God's care is with us in everything. And we can give thanks to God for that. And for those boys and girls who help us along the way, they show us what kind of shepherding love God gives to us. I hope you give thanks to the people who have helped you and to remember that it's the Lord who is the best shepherd of all. And now will you please join me in the prayer of confession as printed on the screen. Merciful Shepherd, give us the grace to love you as you love. Give us the courage to protect and care for others, even when we are afraid. Grant us the strength to love in truth and action, even when loving this way challenges us. Awaken our curiosity and empathy, even when we tend to neglect the needs of others. Forgive us when our love is absent and show us how to offer our love with more than just words. Shepherd us in, your, in our loving and our living that others may see in us the fruit of your goodness and mercy. In your love and grace, we pray. Amen. And now hear these words of assurance. The one who anoints our heads with oil, the one who feeds us while our enemies look on, the one who delivers us from evil, invites us to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are preparing ourselves to love the Lord with all of our mind, to think about these things that, that God has given to us, and to help us to focus, we are grateful for the work of our chancel choir and the song today, The Lord's My Shepherd, from John Rudder, sung by our chancel choir.
take this opportunity to thank the choir for the, their blessings and for the opportunity to uh, give thanks to God and to that beautiful music that we shared helps prepare us for the uh, our time of uh, reflection. I'm um, looking for um, a way to uh, get the other set of slides ready. Here we go. Um, we're learning you know, how all of this works. And uh, Zoom has always come up with new and improved ways to deal with uh, helping us do our work. And now there's a, a way for me to share with you. Yeah, here we go. The message. 23rd Psalm provides us with an uncanny connection to real life reminds us that uh, there are times when there is darkness, direction, dinner, <laughs> and destiny. Uh, feels like a game show host, but I, I think that's a, a good way for us to remember some of the powerful blessings that the 23rd Psalm can give to us. So as we prepare for our time together this morning, I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for your incredible love for us. A love that was experienced by David as a shepherd boy over 3,000 years ago. 
reflected in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago. And still blessing and nurturing and equipping us today in this 21st century. Guide and direct us as we reflect upon the power of your words to us and our reflection and application to that blessing that you have given us. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the thoughts, hopes, plans, and dreams that we all share might be inspired by your Holy Spirit and enable us to meet the challenges that we face in our own life today. Lord, we're grateful for your strength and encouragement and give you thanks for your guiding us today, our hope, our strength, and our Redeemer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So I want you to think about the, um, the power of the challenges that each of us face. Here we are with a variety of circumstances before us. And sometimes it's the darkness that meets us first. It's often that uh, difficulty that uh, calls us to return to a time to be with God. The 23rd Psalm was uh, credited to David, the shepherd boy, as a young lad in Bethlehem, the town where Jesus was born, because Jesus is from the family of David. And it's a reflection of his real life experience. He began to see that the things he was doing on a daily basis, his responsibilities as a part of the family helped open him up to an experience of the grace of God and was able to see that and share it in the 23rd Psalm. One of my favorite historical characters is St. Patrick, known for his uh, ministry in Ireland. But he too was a shepherd boy as a slave. He was captured when he was about 14 years of age by pirates who took him to Ireland and sold him as a slave. And it was there, remembering his upbringing in the church in England, he began to be a person of prayer as he was watching the sheep. And the 23rd Psalm spoke to him and enabled him to truly find the inspiration he needed in his life and his ministry and mission work in Ireland after he escaped and became a priest and then returned to Ireland as a missionary later on, helped convert that island and leave a lasting impact on the way in which God can speak to us. Jesus, in John chapter 10, talks about the connection that he himself has with the Good Shepherd and reminds us that God is in the business of caring for us in the midst of all of this. So I want to start with darkness. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Fear can be an overwhelming experience of life and often is the first thing we do that causes us to look to God for our help. So I'm going to invite you to think about it for a moment. Remember your darkest moment. And in this past year, there have probably been several that we wouldn't have thought of otherwise. There's fear, not knowing where we will end up with all of this. One of the biggest components of darkness can be disappointment. You and I have incredible imaginations and we have expectations of what life should look like, where we're going to be, what we're going to do, how do we reflect on life circumstances. And they very rarely actually turn out the way we in our vivid imagination have expected them to. So part of the darkness you and I may feel is that disappointment. It didn't happen fast enough. It didn't happen the way we wanted to. The uh, concerns that have entered into our lives, those frustrations that just have interfered with our following through with what our expectations had been. Then there's loss and grief, struggle, challenging ways to try to repair the circumstances that we find ourselves in illness itself and pain related to a variety of circumstances all lead us to struggle with that walk through the darkest valley. I'm sure you can think of some things that were extremely difficult for you 
and why the 23rd Psalm speaks of God's help because God is with us might be a tremendous impact and a source of help. I will not fear. We live in a world where darkness is considered something to avoid as much as possible. And so we're taught by the world we live in and other resources and celebrities and other ideas to camouflage it so that we don't feel that darkness, to forget it, to mask it, to, you know, cover it over with something else. And so the benefit to the fear that will lead us to sense God's presence is often denied. Remember, the 23rd Psalm says that in darkness thou art with me. One of the things that might help us to reflect on those moments of darkness is that the prophet Isaiah, uh, in the midst of his grief when his friend King Uzziah died, pushed him towards the temple. And there he felt God's spirit nurturing and encouraging and equipping him. Billy Graham also often quoted Corey Ten Boom as a source of strength for him in times of darkness. If you remember Corey's story, her family hid the Jews in Holland for several years until she was discovered and they were arrested and sent to Ravensbrück concentration camp. And there, Corey's sister died. Years later, she was on a world tour sharing her testimony about how God had helped. And somebody came up to her and said, you know, we're grateful that you're talking about God's help. Um, and you're blessed now. And Corey said, oh, no, I was blessed in Raven's book, too. God was with me in that darkness. Lisa Turkhorst who I'm sharing a great deal of the resources for today's message, uh, was uh, introduced to me by Elaine. She, uh, reading from the Proverbs 31 uh, meditation and email uh, devotional, uh, pushed me towards uh, a couple of books that Lisa has written lately because she has experienced some incredible darkness. A uh, very famous Christian speaker has done Women's Retreats has written 18 books, has uh, been the epitome of what a strong Christian should be like. And her husband had an affair and they were moving towards divorce. And so Lisa is reflecting the darkness of her disappointment and the disintegration of her life. But it has led with prayer and counseling and encouragement to a reconciling and a renewal of vows between her and her husband. But she has been uh, a tremendous influence for me in the midst of this pandemic that we're going through to find God's help in the midst of the darkness, because it will help us not to fear. But one of the illustrations she used that I thought was very clever was that in the midst of her darkness, she felt like her whole life had fallen completely apart and she felt no better than dust, the dust you find everywhere. And then the Lord Spirit spoke to her and said, you know, dust is a powerful ingredient in what God can do. Because remember that God took the dust of the earth and formed life. And Jesus took the dust of the earth and mixed it with his spit and rubbed it on the eyes of a blind man and brought forth sight. So sometimes that darkness and that dust can be what leads us to rescue, leads us to recognize that the Lord is directing us through the path of righteousness for his namesake. And we will find encouragement and hope and healing. But sometimes it takes the darkness to help recognize that we're not capable of solving every problem and every circumstance in life. And we really need God's help. So that fearing no evil can come to us in the midst of darkness as we allow the Lord to give us direction. Part of that direction is to besides still waters. Now, you and I probably don't spend a whole lot of time out in the field minding sheep, but the sheep desperately need still waters to drink. Because of the, you know, the wool around their faces, if the stream is going by too fast and they stick their head in to drink, 
Their head soon gets wet, the wool becomes heavy, and sheep can drown if it's not still water. So one of the guiding principles and the help for uh, recognizing what God can do is that God directs us to what restores us in still waters. With God's direction, you might remember and experience that same feeling too. When you got help, you know, maybe you were lost and somebody helped straighten you out. Uh, we didn't always have GPS and maps in the car. You know, sometimes we had to rely on the gas station attendant to point us in the right direction. Um, the uh, descale light lit up on our coffee maker and it blinked for a couple of days and I wrestled with trying to figure out how to fix it. But I'm really grateful that uh, the company that purchased, that uh, manufactured has uh, videos available on their website for how to do stuff. And I had to watch it five or six times because it made no sense to me to unplug it and turn it off in order to cleanse it. I figured it needed the power and the, and the, the button on. But after the third or fourth watching the video, I recognized it said, turn it off. <laughs> and then when I got the directions right, we got it to work. So you might know, think about the source of, he leads me beside the still waters. God does the lead. God takes us even in darkness through that valley to the places where we can find the help we need. The internet is one of those resources for directions. Uh, I used it to help descale our coffee maker. But sometimes the solutions the internet tries to provide and it takes us away from what God is doing and how the shepherd can be the one whose paths of righteousness we need to follow. The internet will point you towards great books, great blogs, great resources, a lot of incredible information, and I rely on it heavily. But I need to remember that my life, my soul, spirit, is under the direction of the Good Shepherd. And so we need to remember as Christians that the, we should follow that guide and recognize the Holy Spirit's help and overcome that sense of uh, anxiety that we may feel. We need rest. We need a Sabbath. We need a place in our incredibly busy and stressful lives to allow God to lead us beside the still waters to restore our soul. That New York Times recently did an article about uh, languishing, that one of the things that this COVID pandemic thing has stressed us out, and we need to find a way to recover from all of those experiences. As the situation is getting better, as 60% of our neighbors have been vaccinated, we're beginning to anticipate some kind of restoring to a, a new way of living. We need to recognize we still need the beside still waters rest. And the church can provide that rest, a chance to pause in the midst of all that we do so that we can find the help we need. The next uh, powerful component of the 23rd Psalm, and this is one of my favorites, is dinner. You know, a way to remember that uh, the 23rd Psalm talks about the host. He prepares before us a table and our cup runneth over. God does bless us. And as we think about uh, being able to return in a way, we're looking forward to sitting down with friends to eat or going back together again to our favorite restaurants or to think about some of those feasts that we had with family that we might be able to do again. Elaine and I are looking forward to having people on our deck, to having picnics and, and gatherings and celebrations. So it's really important that we recognize that one of the things that God does for us in this 23rd Psalm is to help us when we start in the darkness and he gives us direction, that part of that direction includes an overflowing blessing, the resources and gifts that God can help us with. And I hope and pray that as we uh, face the, the trouble and recognize that God is uh, helping us through this time, we will come to the blessing. Now, some of the blessings of COVID-19 
you know, has turned into a joke, COVID-19 extra pounds. And we're going to have to overcome the COVID-19 extra pounds somehow. But we will be able to recognize that God is going to be with us as our cups are overflowing, running over. The source of provisions, the blessings of help, the food for thought that can fill and nurture us as we wrestle with the darkness, as we wrestle with directions, and as we move towards our destiny. Remember the food for thought. Uh, this is a shameless plug for my latest Bible. I know uh, Elena said I'm a member of the Bible of the Month Club, and it feels like I've got that many. But in this day and age of uh, ability to do incredible things, there is now a filament Bible, F-I-L-A-M-E-N-T Bible, that has an accompanying app. If you buy the New Living Translation Bible, the page numbers and your app, it's a free app in your phone or your iPad. You click on the page number for that particular passage of scripture. And the internet will bring you a set of notes, a set of devotions, a set of music for every page of the Bible and every verse in scripture. And so now the internet can be an incredible source of help for discovering the kind of blessings that overflow and the food for thought. As people of God, we need to recognize the gift of Bible study, the gift of prayer, the gift of studying together, the fellowship we share, can offer us uh, the help we need. So, food for thought and the blessings of God that overflow will lead us to destiny. For I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The gift of God's help in the darkness is leading us to still waters, is guiding us to an overflowing experience of grace, is because God loves us so much and wants us to spend eternity together. So remember, you're on a journey. Remember that the priority for us as people of God is to trust in God above all else. And perhaps you remember when your spiritual journey started, you asked Jesus to come into your heart. You decided that you would allow his love and his guidance along the way to be such the important thing in your life. And perhaps the life has overwhelmed you and you've forgotten some of the benefits of that commitment to ask Jesus to be your mentor, your life coach, your director, so that you can experience the still waters and the overflowing cup that will lead us to recognize that we can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So if you haven't signed up to let God lead you yet, you can always do that. Perhaps you've been overwhelmed and you've drifted away from that in initial compassion and excitement. Uh, now, as always, especially in this Easter time, a recognition that we can turn that dust of life into a new direction, that the filling of the Spirit of God, the raising of those bones in that dry valley are possible because God is able to call us to a new destiny. So remember, Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. And I do that so that where I am, you might be also. A real blessing for destiny. So I hope this 23rd Psalm will remind you that yes, there is darkness in life, but it's God who leads us through the darkness and that leadership gives us direction. That direction gives us a chance to experience that overflowing cup of grace and that helps us in our final destiny. May God bless, encourage, and equip you in all that you do to experience this awesome blessing from God in all that you do. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you have offered us your rod and your staff to comfort us, that you have offered us direction, even in the midst of our darkest valleys, that our cups overflow because of your grace and love for us. And may we learn that this can lead us to dwell in your house forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have some special music for you. 
The Lord's My Shepherd by Stuart Downing. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his good delights and I I will trust in you, and I will trust in you. Blessings of the 23rd Psalm be with you this day and going forward. We respond to that uh, grace that God has given to us in a variety of ways, including um, opportunities to get involved in blessing others. Upcoming events are a chance for us to take the direction and guidance and help that Jesus has given us and influence and bless and resource others for growing faith. Here's a couple of opportunities for you that we want to encourage you to recognize. Over the next several Sundays, there are five Sundays in May. Next week, we will be sharing Holy Communion together. I want to remind you to gather your elements 
so that we can pray for them and bless them. And you can share in Holy Communion, even though it's on Zoom. The scripture is from John 15, 1 to 8. The importance of the vine and the branches and our remaining connected. The 9th of May is Mother's Day, and we're looking at Psalm 98, a celebration of thanks. So I want you to start thinking about ways in which you have been blessed by the women in your life, and we want to learn to give thanks for them. On the 16th, we're looking at Ascension. Jesus returns to heaven after 40 days of demonstrating that he was alive after his resurrection, and we're looking at that passage of scripture. The 23rd is Pentecost, the birth of the church. And we're looking at the power of the Holy Spirit to transform and renew us. The 30th is Memorial Weekend. And we're looking at Acts chapter 2, the purposes of the church, a way to see what we can do after we're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to be a blessing for others in our ministry together. I invite you to join us and to tell others. Um, I didn't get a chance to fix this slide. We did our Earth Day celebration on Wednesday, but we will continue to have a Wednesday night gathering at seven o'clock for all an alternate worship experience. And as uh, several of those who were there reminded us, we should be thanking God for the earth all the time. North Bethesda United Methodist Church has a YouTube channel. And one of the great gifts that that channel provides for us besides the recording of these services so that people can catch them if they're not able to join us currently, is to recognize that it's a good introduction to the church. So if you've been talking to your friends about ways to feel closer to God, if they've experienced some darkness and are looking for leading to still waters and the overflowing of God's grace, tell them about the resources that North Bethesda offers on the YouTube channel. So please share that with a neighbor. One of the things that uh, we do together is to share in uh, breakout rooms following our worship service, a chance for us to catch up with each other. Uh, it's a random assortment so that we can uh, reconnect with members and friends of our congregation in a live nature, uh, to pick up what's going on and to share that with each other. So I wanna encourage you to hang in there for our virtual breakout rooms today. As we approach the um, uh, new time that, uh, the new situations are giving us, uh, we're trying uh, a poll feature. Um, and there's a couple of questions to, um, uh, to work on. And I hope that um, you will take a look at what's uh, available for us. Um, look through the questions. There's six of them, I think. This is just a way for us to say, um, we're looking at the possibilities of moving forward. And I've always known that the uh, resources of uh, the creative minds that are together are far better than I'm ever able to figure out everything. So the, the questions relate to our gathering together in the church again, are looking at uh, your preferences and your for in-person worship versus Zoom worship. Uh, and we know that this is going to be a challenge for us. Um, we're looking at when we might do the different things that we do. Uh, I can't be two places at once. So the challenges of trying to, to do what works well. So we're offering you a chance to do some polling for that. Um, we're thinking about uh, outdoor worship, perhaps as a way to ease in towards that uh, new situation. And so here's an opportunity for you. Think about it, pray about it, click on it. I'll leave it there for you for a couple of minutes and uh, you'll see that um, we're looking at uh, a variety of ways to, to be uh, grateful for that. Uh, one of the things that we do as we continue to think about the, the, the polling, and I hope that this helps you to reflect on being prepared, is that uh, all that we do is uh, a chance for us to share in the grace that God has given us. And one of the ways we show our thanks to God for uh, leading us through the darkness and the valleys the leads us in direction and overflowing cup is to share that overflow through our tithes and offerings. And so we try to make it as easy as possible for you to support our church. And we support others, you know, about the Chef Majed and the opportunity to order food by Wednesday and pick it up on Thursday. It's a good chance for us to support our refugee family. We've been helping for over a year now. So that's one way you can respond. Uh, you can respond by, um, uh, helping us as a, a church recognize the um, 
you can give uh, online, you can uh, text to give, you can send your check to the church. Uh, as you know, we need uh, the resources so that we can continue to be a blessing for families and friends and our community. So respond with grateful hearts for all that God has given to you. One of the things that we do together as a church is to pray, to pray for one another. Uh, we have several prayer requests that have come in by email and others, but I also know that you can use the chat feature at the bottom to uh, reflect on um, and request prayers. We're continuing to pray for Chang, who's home now, but continues to uh, need uh, God's healing touch. So pray for Chang and Tsitsi and the family. Uh, Ludmilla's granddaughter in Germany is uh, wrestling with COVID. So prayers for healing for her. Um, Jay, who uh, was a part of the um, Cullop family who's installed our um, HVAC, et cetera, uh, lost a leg in a motorcycle accident. So we want to continue to pray for him. Um, my sister-in-law, Mary, is visiting the doctor on Tuesday to get the uh, directions for the upcoming cancer surgery. So prayers for them. Um, we want to be praying for our church leaders as we begin to look at uh, new ways we can uh, work together and worship together and being prepared for our new pastor who comes July 1. We want to be in prayer for Dean, who's still in Afghanistan, trying to resolve some of the challenges that are there before he goes to Dubai. So prayers for him would be greatly appreciated. We want to be uh, praying for father-in-law Gil who's having difficulty with dementia. We want to keep Trevor in our prayers, who moved to Minneapolis for a new job. We want to pray for an aunt who's in hospice care and a cousin who's recovering from major cancer surgery. And we want to be praying for uh, Liz's sister, Anne, who is facing cataract surgery tomorrow. So you can see that there's a variety of ways in which we can reach out and encourage each other. I want to give you time now for a silent prayer for you to talk to God about the valleys of darkness you're walking through or the places where you're ready to have his leading in the paths of righteousness. Uh, to pray, to give thanks for the overflowing blessings which God has given to you and to encourage one another as we move in our destiny to spend eternity in God's house. So we'll take this time to pray and give thanks to God. Gracious God, we thank you for your incredible love, a love that sustains and nurtures us in so many ways, a love that equips us to know your guidance and help even in the darkness. We want to pray for Chang and Namilla and Jay, for Mary and Dean, for Sally and Anne and Gil and Trevor. We know that, uh, Lord, you know each of the people in our lives who we worry about, are concerned for, are trying to support and equip, and we just ask that you would give us the strength and the love to be able to do that as we love one another. God, and direct us as we move towards the restoration of life together. Uh, pray that those who have been hesitant to get uh, a vaccine will get one so that we can reach the point where it's easier for us to be together again. We ask that you would guide and direct us in the choices that we make so that the reduction of the anguish of this uh, COVID pandemic will begin to improve. Lord, we pray for the thousands of families that have lost loved ones because of this. And we pray for the thousands of doctors and nurses and therapists and and all those who play a part in being a channel of your healing touch 
through the medical field that they've been given the strength. I know that it has been uh, uh, wearing on so many to try to continue to be available to help others when we ourselves are in need of help and compassion. Lord, teach us that the benefits of your being our good shepherd are exactly what we need in times like this. And we're grateful that you've shared through David and Jesus and the life of our church and all those who have gone before us, the power and example of this leading by your shepherd. And so now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us as a way to reflect on the blessings that this has been for us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to return to the world that you have given to us, O God, we want to share in a closing song, which is in our hymn books, uh, number 136. Uh, this version and the words are on the screen. comes from Acapeldridge. The Lord is my shepherd, I'll not want. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. In
we want to uh, share in our uh, sending you forth and uh, invite you to consider hanging around for our uh, breakout rooms. But let us remember, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. In pastures green, we rest secure. Our shepherd leads us forth. By still waters, we rest secure. Our shepherd brings us abundant life. Go with the blessings of our shepherd. Our closing song, Go Now in Peace, from the Coronado Community United Methodist Church. You're welcome to sing along. bless you have a great week you. thanks for coming stay put breakout rooms are coming join us Good. let's share it together Amen. Amen. All right.